Hi, welcome to Country Stitchers. This is our 14th broadcast, and I'm Liz, and Deb, the other Country Stitcher, is away on holiday. So while she's gone, I'm going to take this opportunity to show you how I finish my Just Nan mice. I had shown three of them on a previous broadcast. This one is a Christmas mouse. This is very different. It's a hedgehog. I think this is very, very clever. And then I'm going to be using the partner to this Halloween mouse as the basis for the demonstration I do today. And I'm going to do this in a little different fashion. I'm not going to sit here and put it together for you, but what I'm going to do is show you the different steps I do that are different than the finishing instructions that come with it. Um, I had done the first two uh, using the instructions and just I kept fumbling around with it and I thought there needs to be a way for me to finish this and feel comfortable. So I came up with just a little take from Liz's perspective on how it might be easier to do. Before I do that though, I thought I would just show everybody the other little smalls that Just Nan has that I've purchased. She has more than this, but these are the ones I have to do yet. Um, there's two humbugs, which are these sort of um, triangular envelopes, if you will. They're fun. Oops hand upside down <laughs> and very cute I like these two my twin granddaughters had a nursery that was done in owls so I'm looking forward to doing these two one for each of them they're four now so I have a little time till they'll appreciate something like that and then the rest of the Christmas mice. They have a gingerbread Santa mouse and a gingerbread Mrs. Santa. So that's the pair. And then they have a gingerbread angel mouse. And this is the cube that she would sit on. And then they did a reindeer mouse. And I'm looking forward to stitching those. They go very quickly. And what I find I, I like to do is sit down, get everything pulled together, and do a couple of them. But then I end up setting those aside to finish, and I wait until I'm ready to do some finishing work, and then I'll do um, whatever's in the bin. So what I do that's different is I have fashioned an insert for my mouse when I close it out. So if you will, when you've stitched your mouse and anybody who's done smalls where they've joined uh, two pieces of linen together using an outline stitch where you just whip the two outlines all the way around, that's the technique for the mice. You start at the top at the nose and you stitch using the outline stitch down the edges of the mouse. You stitch the seam together until you get to the bottom. Now, I chose on this mouse to use, um, it's called YL1, is that correct? YL1 Clear. Um, it's a like a nylon thread invisible yes and that little sock over it is something knitters use and they make them small enough to go over the little balls of yarn and I use it to hold my uh, thread on my spool um, but that's what I used on this one uh, to join it and see if you can see the difference on my other mouse he's kind of covered by his broom um, let me use one that doesn't have a broom. You can see the thread 
difference between the two there. The Halloween mouse is using the invisible thread and I used a neutral beige thread on the Christmas mouse on the right. So I thought I'd see what this looks like. I do like this. Um, so I closed her and she's at the point where she would be ready to fill. In the meantime, I've gathered some things together. I've cut some patterns using the actual stitching of the mouse as a template and I've cut these pieces of muslin to the size of the actual stitched outline of the mouse and if you can see here I've traced that and cut it just within an eighth of an inch and it's not it doesn't have to be exact and what you do then is you stitch using a running stitch across the top of your mouse's nose um, so I've stitched across the nose and straight down the side whoops wrong side straight down the seam and at that point I stop my thread at the corner and I've made like a little funnel if you will using that pattern of the stitched mouse um, sorry I'm leaning here I'm at the kitchen table um, and then the next step after you've done that I knot my thread at the top so that it won't pull on the seam because the next step with this is the same as the next step on the finished mouse which is to gather it so what I do is I stuff that gathered piece and I've taken the liberty of already stuffing this one I stuff it with polyfill and leave just enough room inside of it to be able to get my little finger in there. Then, for those of you who may have seen them before, I use um, what are called poly pellets. You can buy those at Joann's, probably at any craft store. And I put those down inside that impression. Doesn't take very many but this adds just a little bit of stability to the base um, and a little bit more weight than just the uh, weight of the button that goes on the bottom. Ouch. Myself. Then I just keep tapping down the inside as I draw it together and I lose the pellets as I go sometimes too there kind of hard to keep in there. Now, when I stuff this, I forgot to mention, you can use a number of things. You can use your finger, you can use um, the blunt end of a pencil, um, you can use a chopstick, or this actually used to come with polyfill. Um, it was just so you could fill your corners on something. Um, and my grandmother had it with her stitching things, so I have that now. And then there's this little device called a purple thing. <laughs> That's the actual name of it. Um, and I like this a lot. This enables you to kind of tamper it down. Um, you can get down inside of it. You can get all the way down into the tip, even though you've got it stuffed, get things down in there. So now that I've pulled a bunch of pellets out, you get to this point and you gather it up and then you work to close it as tight as you can. And then I work the outside edges down inside that mouse and this is the end result of that and it just it takes just working with it um, until you get it all pulled together and tucked in it's like finishing the top of a strawberry almost um, except you don't have quite a point at the end you have a nose <laughs> this isn't this isn't anything really spectacular but the last step then is that you take your mouse um, and you make sure that you have the shape the same way on both pieces so you want your nose to be at a slant and then you just insert your piece inside and now you don't have to worry about your polyfill your pellets or anything coming back out while you're gathering up the bottom 
of your mouse. And once you've gathered it, then you just take, you gather around the outside, you pull it tight, and when you get it as tight as you can, you can use the outline stitch and go across it to close it. Or what I do is I take my, they call this a, a fairy button. I take my fairy button once I've drawn it together at the bottom and I lay my fairy button on top and then I use my thread and I go through the rim of this button using the outline stitches all the way around and then that secures it just at the outside edge like that. And the finished effect is that it's sitting on its little button. Um, all in all, I'd say it probably takes me about an hour and a half to finish one of my mice. Um, the other appointments that get done when you're doing it is you have an ornament hook and that just slips inside the mouse and the tail sits on top. I usually tack one stitch down at the back of the of the mouse if it tries to move at all. I just put a little invisible stitch over that. And they talk about gluing the hat down. I take a thread and I anchor it on the top of the head of the mouse and then I run it up the inside there's a hole in the top of the hat and I run it back down the outside and then I s just tuck it back into the thread and pull it tight and knot it off. And that way his hat stays on and I don't have glue on my finish piece. I, I try not to glue it if I can find a way to use needle and thread. I just, that's kind of a thing I like to do. That's pretty much the simple version of how I finish my Just Nan mice. Um, I would like to say that if you've uh, got an interest in finishing one of the mice, you haven't stitched one before, and you might be interested in stitching one, um, I'd like to pass on the hedgehog pattern. So if you would like to stitch this hedgehog, please just uh, put love hedgehogs in the comments below and I'll have a drawing for someone who might like to stitch this and I'll forward this pattern. Um, this is I think the easiest pattern to stitch. Uh, it's done in rows that make that checkerboard look on the and so it's even fairly simple to stitch as well as to put together. Um, the pins are very easy to come by and I will include um, some of the black beads. I have plenty of black seed beads so and if I have any more of those white pins, I'll include those too. Um, I have one other thing I've been working on while Deb's away. I have a class on Monday with Stitches Unlimited. And it's being taught by Beth Seals of Summer House Stitch Works. And I'm almost completed with my homework. I've done both sides of grandma's heart which is the uh, main focus of the piece. I've got those two pieces done and I'm working on the pin keep and then I just have the floss tag left to stitch and I have three days to do it so I think, well two <laughs> minus today, um, I think we'll get there and I'm excited about that and that's about it. Um, I was glad to have the time to get to do this broadcast and thank you very much for tuning in and please have a good weekend and remember to share the joy in needlework. Thank you.